Hey everyone, so in my older React tutorials, I used class components and just generally old school practices. Since then, React has evolved quite a bit. Instead of writing class components, it's now more common to use function components. And when you use function components, you lose the classic way of holding state using this.setState, and you also lose lifecycle methods. And these are methods such as component did mount and component did update. So if the new way of writing React components foregoes these things, how can you hold state and how can you handle component changes in React? The answer is React hooks. React hooks were introduced in version 16.8 of React, and as of this recording, we're on 16.13.1. I'm gonna start off by talking about how to manage state, and then I'll talk about how to replace the lifecycle methods. In another video, I'll talk more about the benefits of hooks, and also even how to create your own hooks. This video is going to be an important one because my future React tutorials are gonna be using React hooks from now on. But first, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already so you don't miss any of my future videos. And while you're there, go ahead and hit the thumbs up so that my video will reach more people. Let's go ahead and get started. The best way to explain this is probably to take a classic React class component and then convert it to the new function way. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we have a React component that updates text when a button is clicked. As you can see, we are rendering some JSX that contains a button. And this button has an onClick function that calls this.setState and updates the text. Inside of the div above this button, we are simply rendering the text that's currently in state. So when the state updates, our text will update as well. As you can see, when I click the button, you can see the text now updates. This is a very simple example, but it shows the power of React. You see, one of the things that makes React so powerful is how simple it makes it for us to react to state changes or component re-renders. So let's convert this component to a function component that uses hooks. I'll start by changing the class declaration to a function. Now, obviously we can't use class methods inside of a plain JavaScript function like this. So we need to remove constructor and render. Notice how I kept the return portion. When creating a function component in React, we want to return JSX. Each time this function runs, it will re-render the component on the screen. Now, if I tried to run this, it would break. That's because I am still trying to make a reference to this.state, which does not exist in this function. This is where hooks will come into play. So let's import a function called useState. useState is a function that returns an array with exactly two items inside of it. The first item is the value, and the second item is a function that updates that value. You can also pass in an initial value to use state, and I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to use destructuring assignment to pull these two items out of the array so that I can use them. And now instead of this.state and this.set state, I will use text and set text. And I pass in button has not been clicked to the use state function in order to set the initial value. We don't have to pass in an initial value, but I am here because I want button has not been clicked to be displayed initially. Now, as you can see, this component works just like the class version, except now we are using hooks with function components. Now let's add a new piece of state. Let's say we want to count each time the user clicks the button. Well, all we have to do is create more state by using use state like so. Then inside of the on click for the button, I'll also call set count and set it equal to count plus one. Below the button, I'll display the count like this. As you can see, the new way of handling state is a little bit different than the old way, but it's still pretty easy to understand. In my opinion, where it starts to get a little bit confusing is when you're trying to replace the lifecycle methods using hooks. And that's because it takes a bit of a mindset shift. Instead of thinking about React components as having life cycles and then reacting to certain parts within that cycle, we need to think about reacting to certain pieces of data change. We need to think whenever some piece of data updates, what do we want to do? We need to think about it like, hey, when this variable changes, what do we want to do? It can be a little bit confusing at first, but in my opinion, it's a much better way to think about web application programming. So let's go ahead and get into that mindset. Let's say that we want to save the number of times that the user has clicked the button so that when they refresh the page or when they come back to this web page, the number of clicks will be saved. We can use local storage to save the number of clicks, but how can we access local storage and then set the initial value of count on component mount. To do this, we can utilize another hook called useEffect. Start by importing the useEffect function. Now useEffect is a function that accepts a function as its first argument and an array as its second argument. There are three scenarios that I wanna talk about in regards to this second argument. If you don't provide any array at all, the function passed in as the first argument will run every single time the component re-renders. If you pass in an empty array like this, the function will only run the very first time the component renders. This is effectively the same as component did mount. 
Lastly, if you want to only run the function when a specific variable changes, then you put the variable into this array. And whenever that variable changes, it will run the function. Regardless of which of the three scenarios you use, the function will always run on mount. That's something to think about. For this first effect, we want to only run it on mount. So we'll pass in an empty array. What I want to do when the component mounts is check local storage for an existing count. And if it exists, I want to set the count to that number. But we also need to set the count in local storage in order for there to ever be a value there. So for this, we can use another effect, but this time we will run it each time the count changes. And what we want to do here is set the local storage each time we set the count. Now each time count is updated, we're gonna run this line of code here. As you can see, using hooks is quite a bit of a different way of thinking about React components. The reality is the new way is actually more powerful and allows us to actually write less code. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna make a video on more benefits of hooks and also how to create your own hooks. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Follow me on social media for dev tips or if you just wanna stay updated and I'll see you all in the next video.